Okay, I gotta start this video right now because we got Dreamweaver going on in the background. Can you hear it? Dreamweaver. So this is drawn to dragons. Drawn to dragons. I don't want to interrupt the song, it's such a beautiful song. And so it's an active art studio. And I was thinking they could set up my trees right here. Yeah. Right here where there's these pallets just sitting there. That 10 footer that I just made a video of sitting on top of my car. I told them when I came in and brought a few pieces. But I'm not looking to sell these. I'm looking to just get some exposure for the work that I do. And I understand what they thought I meant was sell these, because that's what most people mean when they use that word. It's a euphemism for, I want to generate more sales in the future. I want to get more exposure for my work. Artists, and it's a buzzword within the industry. Get some exposure, huh? It's a euphemism that they all use. That means, so you want to generate sales. No, these aren't for sale. So I've decided I'm gonna send that video that I made uh, Charles to Charles and I'm not gonna send it to this guy the Rat King this is his art studio this is the guy that offered me a hundred bucks does that look like art or does that look like a hideous depiction of something that someone did when they were on drugs This is his display case. He does digital artwork online. In other words, he has no need for a storefront because he has nothing to place on a shelf other than these little Star Wars toys and shit. And he says that it's a private invitation only, a, no human access, unba. No human access. Authorized entries, authorized entities only. Read that closely. No human access, authorized entities only. And he told me it's by invitation only. He meets people there and he said, usually late at night during the witching hour. I said, oh yeah, around 3 a.m., huh? Yeah. No human access, authorized entities only. He ain't joking. So when I was over there telling him, yeah, dragons are real, mosasaurs, mosies, your wife told me they're called mosiosaurs. Dragon King, Kali, says, oh yeah, dragons are real. But apparently he still doesn't take me and what I'm doing seriously enough to not try to offer me $100 to try to take advantage of someone who he thinks he has at a disadvantage, who doesn't know what they have in their hands. So I understand why both of them might have thought that I really meant that I want to sell these things. There is no price. Anyone who says, how much could I get one of those from you for? Doesn't understand the entirety of your life's work and all the trinkets and baubles that you've generated, all those fancy pants and lollipops that you've been working towards, running that rat race in the maze that everyone else runs, I ain't running that same race. And all of the money, the trinkets and baubles, and that buy lollipops and fancy. Lollipops are the goodies you can buy. Fancy pants are a status symbol that you seek to attain. I'm not seeking any of those. None of the goodies that money can buy, nor none of the status symbols that comes with having all of those things that money can buy. A BMW, a nice house, a car, a boat, cash, cars, boats, bank accounts, none of that. So when someone asks me, how much can I get one of those from you for? Shows me they don't understand. These are museum quality pieces. <clears throat> and all of the life's work, your entire life's work, and everything you've attained is not worth a fraction of what I have. So everything you have wouldn't buy you a fraction of what I've got. So we're not even on the same race. I'm in a totally different league, a league of extraordinary gentlemen. You might have seen the movie. 
And when I moved out of Doug's, I said that I got to get these pieces out of his house because he would throw them away and destroy them out of spite. And he would. And when I said that, I said, I need to do this because these don't belong to him, even though they are, they belong to future generations. All wealth is knowledge. All economic growth is learning. And these deposit a wealth of knowledge and spur an economic growth cycle of learning for future generations who are willing to look at it and see what it holds. So when someone tells me, how much can I get one of those from you for? Shows me that they don't get it. If you get what I'm doing, what you should say, the appropriate response is, how can I help you? What can I do to assist you in leveraging your abilities that you've demonstrated you clearly have to get your message to a wider audience? To preserve these for the future, not to take one of them and put it in my basement so I can show my friends as a status symbol, look how fucking cool I am. So people who say, how much can I get one of those for? for or try to buy one of my pieces off of me for money, that money is worth nothing. What I'm showing you is that your world is a goner. You're the walking dead already. You just don't know it yet. What I'm showing you is that your future doesn't exist anymore. Your five-year plans that you're still working towards as if none of this is happening. I titled one of my videos, uh, Playing Make-Believe While the World Burns. I haven't published that video yet because it's a little hostile and aggressive and directed towards the people that I work with. But I have put it all on the line. That's what I said in the driveway of Casey Kidd's house in Missouri that I've shown you how to give it all away. The videos that I tried to walk in and show Collie and uh, Charles, that Collie said, yeah, 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 that's nice and all, but I got a hundred bucks and I want to buy that piece. The videos that I wanted to show them, I'm going to forward those to Charles. The very videos and images that I gave to my boss, the guy who I currently work with that decides whether or not I have a job tomorrow, I have put it all on the line. I didn't reserve a little bit for me, I can only go halfway. Uh, in one of my videos, I said I gotta give that to Kali and to Charles because the lyric that I recite within that video that I made for Charles saying, I'd rather be the hunter than the prey and that rat is the prey and I'm the hunter is depicted, a picture tells a thousand words, is depicted that whole story, rather be the hunter than the prey, that rat is the prey and I'm the hunter, is depicted in the image on the front of the video Royals, where she has a snake around her neck and a rat in her hands. And the snake is looking at that rat like it's dinner. The hunter, the prey. Collie, rat king, prey. Charles, drawn to dragons, hunter. The video was titled, Let's Be Lions, Not Sheep, Dragons, Not Rats. Drop my drink. So, I've shown you how to put it all on the line. The video I was trying to show him is what I've given my boss that I work with. And by giving them that, they have access to every single one of my videos. I don't hold anything back. Well, I need to hold a little bit back for myself. I can't tell everyone everything or it might cost me my comfort and convenience of having my ability to generate uh, and provide for myself. I don't even hold out for myself. And maybe that's the lesson I need to learn. And that's in the song Legendary. How many times will you learn the same lesson? And that's also in the song, I'll stop the world and melt with you. That I took a pilgrimage to save this human race, never contemplating it was long gone. I'll stop the world and melt with you. I've seen some changes and it's getting better. Every reset. It actually says I've seen some changes and it's getting better every day. I've seen some changes in the consciousness of this species of the human race. This particular human race is better than the last one. And that one was better than the one before that, prior to the last reset, cataclysm. 
And this consciousness farm, we rock the cradle of love by emptying out that petri dish, selecting pieces of the consciousness of the culture that we want to keep and seed into the next petri dish. And just like when you're making cheese, it's not about quantity, it's quality. All you need is a couple of small pieces of another culture of cheese to put in the ingredients of your new cheese and it will generate, it will germinate and the whole batch of cheese will be the same culture that you took a little piece from, from this other block of cheese. That is a culture within a petri dish, a confinement. In this consciousness culture, all we need is a few seeds that are of the right quality. It's not about quantity. All we need is a few of those to germinate that culture of consciousness in the next petri dish, in the next consciousness farm. And I've seen some changes and it's getting better every reset. And I took this pilgrimage to save this human race, never contemplating that it was already long gone. And maybe that's the lesson that I have to learn over and over and over. How many times will you learn the same lesson to quit trying to save these people when they're already gone? To quit giving everything you have to people who don't deserve it. <clears throat> like when I brought those pieces down here to show drawn to dragons and ran into the Rat King. Got some visitors coming. Just the other day, I loaded up my car to take some of those same pieces to work because uh, a few months ago, two months ago, when, uh, when I gave Bud, I sent Bud those videos, the links and the images showing me touching the logs that are burning on the inside and I'm putting my hand on the outside showing that they're cold to the touch. And I sent him a bunch of video links, including me educating firefighters on the scene of these plasma fires and multiple live plasma fires a few months back. Getting a little distracted here. But uh, yesterday, the day before, when I did that, I sent those to Bud on like a Thursday or a Friday. That's why I'm getting distracted. I'm getting a little bit of uh, nosy people wanting to come hear what I'm talking about. Again, fuck, maybe I need to start walking. Um, so, when I sent Bud those video links and gave him all weekend to soak it in and try to grasp what it is I'm showing him, I took a car full of pieces, lacquered pieces, to work the next Monday. Told him, yeah, I got a bunch of those pieces in my car. He didn't bother looking at them. He didn't want to see them. I guess he had more important things to do. I loaded up my car just the other day, yesterday, the day before, and started to head to work with those again, and I was gonna set them aside to be able to show them Monday. How many times will I have to learn the same lesson? These people are unworthy of what it is I'm trying to give them. They have declared themselves to be unworthy of the kingdom of heaven, and they will not receive these gifts, no matter how hard I try and give it to them. How many times will I have to learn the same lesson? So I've had this idea like on an airplane, when they, say, when they drop the air masks and they say to put the air mask on yourself before you put one on your child, because you're no good to your child if you're choking and gra gasping for oxygen. For my whole life, I have never reserved any for myself. I give it all away. Just like I told you when I was sitting in the KC Kids driveway in Missouri that I've shown you how to give it all away. I gave my last $6 to the guy who was standing there telling me I cost him money. He took both my backpacks that I had loaded up with things that they would need in that homeless camp. Wet wipes. There was a couple of guns in there. BB guns, pistols, air pistols, 15 shots each. I could have pulled those out. Could have made my way out of there no problem with everything that I took in there. But I didn't go in there with the intent of making it out with everything I took in. I took it in there to give it all away. And when he followed me to my car and told me I need to give him some money because I cost him money, I gave him my last $6. That's how I ended up in the driveway of that guy the next morning telling that officer I didn't have money for Jacomo campground. And I had 35 cents left to my name, so I didn't have money for gas. And I still give it all away. Those links, those videos that I tried to show Kali and Charles that he wasn't interested in seeing because he wanted to buy something off me for $100. I've given those links, I've given that knowledge to my boss to the people I work with, 
who can decide that I don't have a job tomorrow and a way to fend for myself or to feed myself. But I still give them everything I have to offer and they give me nothing in return. So how many times will I have to learn the same lesson? Well, that's part of this whole process so that when God pulls the levers, you're not mad at God when he does it. And you recognize these people deserve what they're gonna get. And you recognize, just like that saying, the Lord's Prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I realized a long time ago that thing is backwards. You summon the courage to try to change the things you can. You put in all the effort, 110%, or you won't get the serenity. You summon the courage to change the things you can. You, after putting in all the effort in the world, then you will have the wisdom to know the difference. After you banged your head against this wall a thousand and a million and ten trillion times, you know it's not going to break. You're not going to have a breakthrough. You've tried as many different angles for as long as you possibly can in a couple more different ways and a couple more angles and banging your head a couple more times isn't going to do it. And once you've done that, you have the wisdom to know the difference and only then will you be able to have the serenity to accept this is something I cannot change. Let them go. Be gone with them. Wipe them away. They are done. I did make this pilgrimage to save this human race and they have shown me their true colors. And so I will have the serenity of acceptance that this is something I could not change because I earned the wisdom to know the difference because I summoned the courage to put forth the effort and I gave it all I had. Not 90%, not 95%, all. And only once you give it all will you truly have the serenity when this is over because if you withheld 5%, 10%, you'll think, well, maybe if I'd have just given it another 5 or 10% effort, if I'd have banged my head against that wall just a couple more times from a little slightly different angle, maybe I could have had a breakthrough and gotten through to some of them. Because early on, I told, I told God, you know, they just need the truth. Give me the truth and I'll deliver it to them. He showed me they don't want truth. I'll give you more than they can fucking handle. Letting them try and drink from this cup is like taking a drink from a firing hose, from a fire hose. There's so much coming out at high volume. You gotta choke it down to little, little bite-sized streams that they can get a drink from and digest. And even then, they don't want nothing to do with it. They love the lie so much they will be given a strong delusion. That was COVID-19 and they love it so much they're still wearing their masks. And during that time when there will be a strong delusion, there will be someone who can draw fire down from heaven in the sight of all for everyone to see. Guess what? That's been happening for a while now, but they don't want to see. They don't want the truth. They love the lie so much that that's what they're going to get more of. And in this consciousness farm, we get separated into cultures of consciousness that are like ourselves. So they're going to be with a lot of people that are just like them. They'll be happier that way. They don't like being around truthers. It reflects something to them that, about themselves that they don't like. The fact that they are enveloped in the lie and can't tell up from down and don't know right from wrong or good from bad. Being around a truther makes them feel bad about themselves. You reflect something to them about themselves that they hate and then they project that upon you and tell themselves that they hate you when you're actually just reflecting something to them about themselves that they hate, that they can't stand. Likewise, truthers don't like to be around liars, and we are in a world where truther is a pejorative, a name, a derogatory name that you call someone. Well, we're about to get separated, and the reason for the long, arduous, uh, agonizing process of separation is so that you will not have separation anxiety, you will not have survivor's guilt, and you will know that they deserved everything they got, just like in the process of COVID-19, you can either become a truther, not bow to authority and not bow to peer pressure, but submit to the truth as you know it to be true, or we'll do away with you physically. You will be physically removed once you take the Fauci Achi miracle sauce. You had the chance to become a truther. You had the chance to embrace the truth. And then you would no longer be a liar lying to yourself, engaging in that culture that loves the lie. 
you would join us in our little tinfoil hat culture that y'all like to make fun of so much. But if you don't join us and change up here and in here in your heart, then you will be physically removed from this world and then the only thing left will be truthers. That's how that went. As above, so below. That was a microcosm of what's going to happen on the larger consciousness farm. They all had a chance. They all had just as many opportunities as you and me to embrace the truth and do the right thing when it really matters. And then they could be one of us and go with us where we're going. <clears throat> so we're taking out all the liars. Either they change and become a truther up here and in here, or they get physically removed. And thereafter, nothing but truthers. Oh, by the way, there's that zombie thing. That is no joke. They are driven by impulse. And I just came up with a good example of what this means to be driven by impulse and not even be consciously aware of what it is you do and why. Say you have a fender bender accident with someone and they have a California license plate and you lose it. You just cut loose on them. And you're not even consciously aware that it was the California license plate that triggered you in a subconscious way in your instincts because of all the frustration that you're harboring inside from this cultural, like, like, the, like the song by Madonna and Quavo, Future. It's a culture ride. It's a culture override, right? And so we have two cultures at war with each other here. It's a spiritual warfare we're in. And you get in a fender bender with some guy who's got a California license plate on and you just lose it. You cut loose on him. And the way that you know when someone is harboring and transferring, harboring all that frustration, then transferring it onto someone and saying, you're the reason I feel the way I do, is when the response is disproportionate to the supposed offense that was committed. So the guy cut you off and you get in a fender bender, but you unleash on him disproportionate to the offense that was supposedly committed, the fact that he cut you off and gotten you in a fender bender. Because you're harboring all of that anger and frustration from the culture war that we're in, and you see that California license plate, and it represents that culture that is enveloping our world, that you can see the sickness. Can you see the swastika? So when you see that California license plate, it triggers a subconscious, instinctive, <clears throat> releasing of all that you've been harboring, all of that frustration and anger that you're harboring from within this culture war. <laughs> There's Rat King over there. That is an example of how a person can be triggered or moved by an impulse that, is un that they're unaware of. It's from within their subconscious that they are moved. And these zombies that want to come just, I don't know why, oh, I think I want to walk over here. And they're attracted to me like flies on shit. To come into my presence and agitate and aggravate and antagonize in ways that they don't even recognize that that's what they're doing and why. In traffic, they're just moved through impulse like biobot transceivers, like remote control humans that are being driven through a spiritual impulse that they have no clue of what actually moves and motivates them and causes them to turn right instead of left or stop instead of go. So there is a reality. There's an example of that culture override right there. Yeah. So there's a reality of these biobot transceivers that are driven through impulse, that are, they're not even at the controls in their own cockpit. Don't take it personal when they do these things to you. Recognize that you can actually manipulate them knowing how easy it is. Just like a kid that doesn't want to play with a toy until you're playing with a toy, until the other kid's playing with a toy and then suddenly they want to play with that toy. These drivers, they don't want to be in that lane until they see you going for that part of the lane and then they want to be over there. You can trigger them. You can manipulate them. You can pretend to be going over there like you want that space and they'll go in there and block that space and then you can go around them knowing that that's what they were going to do as soon as they saw you going for that space. It's not just in traffic. It's everywhere. They are driven like flies on shit through an emotional vibratory frequency 
And if they are in the midst of, they're in the presence of someone else who is miserable, loves misery and suffering, and is trying to inflict misery and suffering upon everyone around them, they're like, oh, you're one of us. Okay. Okay, you're cool. You hate the world and you're seething with anger and animosity and bitterness and contempt in your heart too? Oh, okay. Let's go find someone else to do it to then. And when they can sense through a vibratory frequency that you're not one of them, they latch on to you. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm just trying to... And now I'm going to talk a little bit about passive aggressive behavior and hostile aggressive behavior. It's probably a good thing I'm in the mall right now so I can't start ranting and raving like a lunatic too much before security gets called. <laughs> Antagonize, aggravate, and agitate in order to elicit anger and aggression is what these people at work do to me every day. There's at least two or three of them. Some are coming around, they're on the borderline of uh, being able to uh, change their ways. Here, I'm gonna show you the view out the, out the bay window here. It's a pretty nice view. That's karma chameleons coming on the, you hear it? Karma, 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 karma chameleons. They come and go. Loving would be easy if your life was like my dreams. Red, gold, and green. Red, gold, and green. Got this place to myself now. Which is better that way? Karma chameleons. Like reptilians? They come and go and they separate the consciousness farm based on your consciousness. They come and then they're gone. They come and go. Karma. Retribution for your behavior in this world is a real thing. And the karma chameleons, they come and go. We're getting ready to go. Like it said in the song, Stop the world and melt with you. I made a pilgrimage to save this human race. By the way, Stop the World. There's a movie called The Day the World, the Day the world Stood Still. And people probably assume that's just talking about humans. The day that humans came to a, a, a dead stop, stopped them dead in their tracks because aliens arrived. Or it could also simultaneously be referring to the pole shift. When there's the long day on one side of the world and the long night on the other side of the world, as we can see in these texts, these ancient texts where like the sun stopped for a day and then went back the other way. The day the sun rose twice, once in the east and then once in the west. And it stops and starts spinning the other way. And the sky turns from red, blue to red. The day the earth stood still might not just be referring to the people of the earth, being stopped dead in their tracks and standing still. This fly is swarming me like a biobot transceiver. But it might actually be referring to the pole shift, the pole reversal. A double entendre, the day the earth stood still is also the day the aliens arrived. The day the karma chameleons came and went. Call them Anunnaki, call them Elohim, call them whatever you want. Only true idiots think we're alone and we're on the top of the food chain and we fucking sprung out of the mud. And believe in that scientific explanation of survival of the fittest and uh, evolution and all that shit. Only truly ignorant people who love the lie so much they don't want the truth still believe in that shit. <clears throat> God damn it, we got a little more company. So, maybe I'll tell you about the five A's antagonize, agitate, and aggravate in order to elicit anger and aggression. That's what passive aggressive behavior is. And the reason they do passive aggressive behavior is so they can't be held accountable for their attack on their target. Well, what? I was just trying to do my job. I was just trying. You're the one that's responding with hostile anger and aggression. So they ag agitate, aggravate, antagonize to elicit anger and aggression. That's what these passive aggressive bitches do because that's who engages in passive aggressive behavior. Homosexuals, bitches, and children. Not even women. Women, you might think, well, women, that's primarily their primary form of uh, aggression is passive aggressive. 
bitches, real women, they stand behind the shot that they take at their target. They don't, passive aggressive, tries to beat around the bush and come in at an angle and then hide the hand that threw the rock and go, oh no, I wasn't trying to attack, agitate, antagonize, and aggravate you. I was just trying to do whatever I was trying to do. They beat around the bush, they come in at an angle, they hide the hand that threw the rock. That way they can't be held responsible for the attack that they're constantly agitate, antagonize, aggravate, and trying to take you down over the long term. That's what you experience in office space, in an office space full of homosexuals and women is passive aggressive behavior. Oh, I like that dress you're wearing. Oh, that looks good on you. When they know that you don't like that dress and it's laundry day and you're just wearing the, the dress that you don't like how it looks. So they're trying to get under your skin in a passive way. Oh, I just complimenting your dress. Bitches, queers, and children, childish, overgrown adult males do the same thing. Real men fire directly at their target, stand behind the attack that they just shot and the shot that they just took, take responsibility and accept the consequences for the attack that they just attacked, that they just launched on someone. That's the difference between passive aggressive and hostile aggressive. So in their attempt, using passive aggressive behavior, agitate, antagonize, and aggravate to try to elicit anger and aggression, they're trying to get you to respond with a hostile aggressive response. Uh, singe man, you just paid $666 fine getting out of jail for yelling at a masker. You just learned that lesson the hard way. Heed these words. There are a lot of people that could understand what I'm saying who can see it happening in their world and go, oh yeah, that is exactly what they do to me. Try to use passive aggressive behavior in order to elicit a hostile aggressive response from you. They indirectly beat around the bush and come in at it from an angle and try to hide the hand that threw the rock and try to get you to fire at them directly and stand behind the attack and the shot that you take at them in order that you accept the blowback and the consequences. Their passive aggressive behavior does not accept any blowback and consequences of the attack that they are constantly engaged in. <clears throat> so, I am going to speak down to some of these overgrown children in a safety meeting real soon. And it's going to make them feel like children. And I'm going to speak to them like children. So, this is primarily directed at Tarek, who wanted to have a verbal confrontation with me the other day. And for about the third or fourth or fifth time in the safety meeting, he takes the floor and begins speaking as if he's speaking generally. When you do this, when you do that, hold on. Okay, we got too many biobots that don't even know where they're going. They're like intentionally just wandering and moseying around and they don't realize why they wanted to wander and mosey over this way. So, maybe I shouldn't get into this one right here because it does get my blood pumping and that's what they want because they are seething and churning. They think that their constant all day obsessive compulsion to try to get under my skin, but there is gonna be no negative consequences for them because they're engaged in passive aggressive behavior that they think they're gonna get away with. You're not getting away with nothing. You're churning, you're seething inside with anger and bitterness and animosity and contempt and hostility while having a smile on your face and saying, oh no, not me. You're eating yourself up inside. Let them do it to themselves. Do not engage. Do not give them what they want, a hostile, aggressive response. That's what they do. Agitate, like a scrub brush, you know, like a, like a scrubby brush, like a, a scrub brush. They're constantly trying to agitate. In communism, in socialism, they have people that are signed as agitators to try to take down the man over the long run. We're gonna stick it to the man. How are we gonna do that? Long-term agitation, death by a thousand cuts. We just get a bunch of people as agitators to work over the long run and eventually we'll wear them down. That is a systemic strategy, a tactic within a strategy that is used to achieve an objective in Marxism, in, ca in uh, socialism, in communism. Agitators 
are actually assigned and given very specific roles they are to play. Here's the mermaid. Karma chameleons, they come and go. Nosy biobot transceivers, they swarm like flies on shit. So, to those who <clears throat> could benefit from this understanding, like Singe Man, when you screamed at a masker, they got you to engage in hostile, aggressive behavior. Meanwhile, they were probably engaged in passive, aggressive behavior, trying to agitate and antagonize and aggravate and get you to respond in that way. Because in Babylon, the hyena is apex predator, and they seek out the lion and try to get you to attack. So they can beta male. It's like at my work, there's a beta male union where they all unite together and we're gonna, we're gonna boycott any alpha males. Yeah, together, us beta males unite and boycott the alpha male. Us hyenas unite to take down the lion. Instead of, if you can't beat them, join them, right? That's the old saying. If you can't join them, let's beat them. Since we can't become lions, let's all join together as a bunch of jackals and hyenas and unionize to agitate and aggravate and antagonize and over the long run we'll take him down then we'll be the apex predator we'll be at the top of the totem pole here in babylon the hyena is the apex predator because they take down collectively individual lions that's the difference between individualism and collectivism capitalism or communism and socialism you want to be a lion or you want to be a hyena? It's up to you, Tarek. You want to keep trying that strategy of success that you've been engaged in for so long and then telling me that I have behavioral issues? There is no way you could have maintained your self-control and not flew off the handle, as you said in your words in our last conversation, trying to say that I fly off the handle twice. And I would do it the same both times. When Steve tried to get me to put myself in a life-threatening position or a situation that would have at least caused lots of physical pain and suffering, that he himself was not willing to put himself in that position, he, w he can expect the same exact response from me next time as he did the first time. It's like if a jack is leaning over. A car, you got jacked up and it's leaning over and you say, I'm gonna go get a jack stand. Oh no, you can climb under there and turn that wrench. Here, go ahead. Oh no, 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 what do you, what do you want, a jack stand or something? You fucking try to get me to put myself under there and you're not willing to put yourself under there? Bitch, you better expect the same response as you got the first time. And as for Tarek, I had been working here um, less than two months, like two months, and he'd been working here a month. And he comes to an impasse. I'm headed uphill with a loaded truck. He's headed downhill with an empty truck. And we had all agreed, loaded truck has the right of way. He pulls in front of me, crosses his arm, says, I'm not moving. You were supposed to call me for permission over the radio to tell me that you were coming up, so I'm not moving and you're gonna have to back down the mountain. Told him, move your truck, little boy. Takes his glasses off. You wanna go right now? I fucking let him know. I, come on down here, bitch. I will, I will grind your face in this mud right here, right now. He reconsidered real quick. He realized he's bluffing and I'm not. It was an actor and a salesmanship job that we were both doing. We were selling each other the same bill of goods. I'm gonna kick your ass. No, I'm gonna kick your ass. That was the bill of goods we were both selling each other. And in our acting, I was a better actor. He was like, wait a minute, you know we're just both acting, right? I'm not sure you're acting. You seem like you really might be about to kick my ass. You better believe it, I don't bluff. Your acting skills were not enough to convince me that you're about to kick my ass. My acting skills convinced you thoroughly. You're about to get your ass wiped. So you've been working out, you've been going to the gym for the last year. And you think no one notices that you walk around with your hands in front of you like this? It doesn't make you look buff, it makes you look retarded and desperate. Like a girl who walks around going like this trying to throw herself at people and everyone can see it and they feel embarrassed. They're like, feel sorry for her. Because she's trying to throw herself at everyone. She thinks if she just bees herself, people won't like me if I just be myself. 
So I have to pose everywhere I go and stick my tits out and my butt to try to get attention, to try to, you know, impress people. Because they won't just like me if I just be myself and be natural. Same thing when Tarek walks around like this. You think no one sees that? You think no one notices that? What, you're so buff you gotta walk like a retard? You're just muscle bound now. No, everyone can see right through you, Tarek. And here's what you can take away from all of these words. I just put it into words better than everyone else. Everyone already knows what I'm saying. There is no teacher who can teach anything new, only help us to remember the things we always knew. That's a lyric from an Enigma song. Google those words I just spoke along with Enigma. You'll come up with the song. So everything I just said about passive aggressive and hostile aggressive behavior, antagonize, agi agitate, and aggravate in order to elicit anger and aggression. Everyone knows that. I just have an ability to put it into words better than everyone else. So everyone else can see right through you also, but now they have the ability to understand and depict and put it into words. I just got told by security, you can't be filming on property. I said, okay, I put it in my pocket, said I'll put it away, thanks for the notice. He was a beta male, unibrow, five foot six, definitely took that security job position, security guard position, to compensate for feelings of inadequacy, incompetency, inferiority, and impotence, and insecurity. That's a beta male. If you want to be a beta male, just keep doing what you're doing. If you want to be successful in Babylon, where all the beta males unite to take down the alpha, just like in communism, where all the poverty-stricken unite to take down the rich and wealthy, then do that. But that world's coming to an end real soon. And in the real world, it's understandable that you would think that that's how the real world works. That your feelings... As we spoke the other day, Tarek, and I was speaking to you just like this. And I told you that some people think that me speaking like this is yelling at them. You say, oh yeah, and you're not, huh? No, I'm not. This is speaking assertively. And there was about six or eight guys standing right behind us that heard that whole conversation. This is speaking assertively. There is three degrees. Passive, aggressive, and assertive. This is speaking assertively. And when I was speaking to you assertively, just as I am right now, and said that some people, because you said something about your feelings, and I said, well, I can't accommodate your feelings and don't expect other people to change their behavior. I told you, emotionally insecure people, emotionally unstable people, these were words that I used, quote, verbatim. Emotionally unstable people demand that everyone around them change their behavior until that person feels okay. And I proceeded to say that some people think that the way I'm talking right now is yelling because you said, well, you're always yelling. That's why I can't approach you and talk to you about anything because you're always yelling. And I told him, well, some people think that what I'm saying right now and the way I'm speaking to you right now is yelling. Oh, and you're not? And I was speaking to you then just like I am now. And I said, no, this is not yelling. This is not yelling at all. Well, it sure fucking feels like a lot of disrespect. I said, like I just said, I cannot accommodate your feelings and change the way I speak in order to accommodate your feelings. What I didn't say is the next thing you want me to do is walk with a little less posture instead of walking around with my spine straight. You want, want, want me to walk over slouch because it feels like the way you walk by is an uh, aggressive hostile attack directed at me. You're going to need to remember these lessons I'm teaching you right now so you can teach those eight-year-old boys that you're trying to raise when they come home from school and say, she did this, she said that, that made my feelings hurt, so I poured my soda on her, so I spit in his face. And you're going to need to teach those boys, you got to take care of your own feelings. You can't demand others around you change their behavior until you feel okay. Your feelings are your responsibility. You cannot ask others to moderate their behavior based on your feelings. And your feelings showed, now I'm speaking aggressively, but your feelings showed that when I was speaking assertively, you felt like I was yelling at you. Therefore, your feelings are a distorted perception of reality that will give you justification to retaliate. And that's why you and I will no longer be having conversations without a moderator like Brad or Bud or a camera recording. 
because you cannot compete with me in a verbal confrontation and you were the one that brought that up. You were the one that tried to address me in a company-wide meeting for the fourth or fifth time and I told you just handle this between you and me. You cannot compete with me in a verbal confrontation. I run circles around you intellectually, verbally, linguistically, so you cannot compete. You are incompetent. You are inferior when it comes to this arena. So you will want to escalate from assertive to aggressive, from verbal confrontation to a physical confrontation because you think in that arena you might be able to win. I assure you I will disable you immediately, not because I want to inflict pain and suffering upon you, but because I will prevent you from having the ability to inflict pain and suffering upon me. And I will do it fast if you ever escalate to physical violence again. Because the other day, when you were saying it sure felt like I was being disrespectful, when I was just speaking assertively, I said, okay, well then how about fuck you? How about go fuck yourself? Now can you tell the difference between the way I was speaking and does it feel the same as just now when I said fuck you and go fuck yourself and gave you some real disrespect? Now maybe you can tell that a minute ago it may have felt disrespectful. This is what it really sounds like when someone's being disrespectful. I turned around and walked away you kept walking after me behind me saying, fuck you, now fuck you. You always come across as a hard ass. Why do you care if I come across as a hard ass? Why? Guys that are up here on the totem pole don't care if I come across as a hard ass. Guys that are down here on the totem pole don't care that I come across as a hard ass. It's guys that are right here on the middle that got something to prove to themselves. Bud doesn't have a problem with me coming across as a hard ass. Nick didn't have a problem with me coming across as a hard ass. You have something to prove to yourself, and you're trying to use me as your unit of measurement to prove an equation. T is greater than or equal to J. Tarek is greater than or equal to Jeff. And if you were so certain that you're the better man, you wouldn't have to spend all day every day trying to prove it. Fabricating these scenarios where you get to make me out to be the bad guy. You make one guy out to be the villain, one guy out to be the victim, that way you get to step in and play the hero. Because at a time when you really had the chance to be a hero, you shrunk from the opportunity. So thereafter, you keep fabricating scenarios where you get to play the hero. I'm defending these potential hypothetical victims from his potential hypothetical villainy, and I'm the hero now. It's understandable that you would think that the world needs to accommodate for your feelings because there's an entire political party that's built around that ideology. Half of our country believes that that's the way the real world works. Is that if you have a grievance, if I'm offended, then someone else did something wrong. And the more offended I am, the more wrong they did. And the more they need to change until I'm no longer offended. That ain't the way the real world works. Reality is going to slap you around. And I know part of you doesn't want to be part of that libtard ideology and culture that you've had ingrained into you. Part of you wants to be a lion. The other part of you thinks you might be able to take down this lion and therefore feel like you're even bigger than the lion because you took him down. You're the secret king who took him down over the death of a thousand cuts over the long run through passive aggressive behavior, antagonize and agitate and aggravate and eventually you'll get him to show you a hostile aggressive and angry response and you'll be able to point at him and say, how dare he, you see how he talked to me? The real world is going to have its way with you and I'm not going to be the one to do it. But if you ever get physical with me, you'll regret it very quickly because when I disable you, Hopefully it won't result in permanent disabilities, but there is a good chance that it will. I'm not doing it to inflict pain and suffering upon you. I will be doing it to prevent you from inflicting pain and suffering upon me. You've demonstrated twice now that that's where you go. When we have a verbal confrontation that you cannot compete in, you cannot win in this arena, so you get frustrated and you want to take it to a physical confrontation. When I'm speaking to you assertively, you feel like it's aggressive and hostile and threatening and disrespectful. So that justifies you becoming that very behavior which you feel like I'm demonstrating. You saw 
hostile and aggressive once upon a time when you threatened me with physical violence because do you want to go right now isn't a question that's a statement a threat of physical violence a rhetorical question is a statement disguised as a question do you want to go right now is the statement of physical violence that you're going to experience from me if you don't change your ways capitulate to my demands and acquiesce to what I'm telling you to do then we're gonna go right now that's what that question was a statement and a threat of physical violence I didn't fly off the handle I made a calculated choice to let you know what you're about to get if you continue to follow through with that threat of physical violence so when Steve tried to get me to put myself in a life-threatening position that he himself wasn't willing to put himself into he received a response from me that it was absolutely appropriate and he will expect he should expect to get a very similar response next time should he do that same thing ever again likewise when you threaten me with physical violence because I called you a little boy what, what is, is that not your preferred pronoun you don't like being called boy oh it was the little part you've got little man complex that's why you try and go to the go to the gym and walk around like this trying to compensate for those feelings of inadequacy incompetence inferiority and insecurity by using me as a unit of measurement to prove something to yourself about yourself you better find some other unit of measurement you better earn your way to the top knocking someone off the top of the totem pole doesn't put you at the top of the totem pole you want to be a lion you gotta earn it I know what I've got I know what I've done I don't need to prove myself to anyone I've got enough self-respect I don't need to demand respect out of you or anybody else you can show me all the disrespect you want it's not going to affect how I feel about myself because I have earned my self-image and my worldview you don't earn it the cheap way by knocking someone like me off the top what you want is the ability to walk into a room and have the confidence and the self-respect that I have the self-esteem that I have and you're not gonna ever have that engaging in passive aggressive behavior you will never get it that way only if you stand behind the attack fire directly at your target like a straight shooter and accept the blowback and the consequences will you ever have the self-confidence that I have and command the respect that I do when I walk into a room Otherwise, you'll continue spending your time trying to overcompensate for your feelings of inadequacy and incompetence and inferiority and impotence and insecurity. And you will overcompensate and make yourself look like that girl that tries to throw herself at all the guys by walking around like this. You fucking walking around like this. You think people can't see that? You think people just think you're so fucking buff that that's just how you walk now. It makes you look retarded, not buff. And that's not how you want to look. You want to look confident. You want to exude the energy that I exude. Well, quit trying to think you're going to outdo me. Learn from me. You want what I got? Do what I do. Just take it.